Hey, Hampshire Chemistry. Uh, welcome to another fabulous day of naming ionic compounds. <clears throat> Today we're just going to uh, write a flowchart and then a quick bullet point list. Uh, so our flowchart is going to be for naming. Our bullet point list is going to be for uh, how do you come up with formulas of ionic compounds. So what you guys should have out in front of you is your big old ionic packet uh, later today. I'm going to be uploading the answers to all of the everything on page one and two. Please double check your answers. Make sure that you know what you're doing. Uh, anyways, as you turn to page three of your packet, you have a big blank page. <clears throat> what I would like you to do is go ahead and write this flow chart and then take a minute to kind of review it, think about it, reflect on it. And then right under it, we're going to uh, put some bullet points. So you can kind of cut this page in half right here. Our flow chart will be on the top. Our bullet point list will be on the bottom. And this will take about five minutes. All right. So when you are naming ionic compounds, you always start with a cation. Remember, cations, those are the positive uh, ionic things. They are the metals. They are to the left of the staircase on the periodic table. On the other side, we have anions. Those are the negative charged uh, ionic things. Those are non-metals or it could be polyatomic ions. Um, when we name these things, though, they always go cation, anion. <clears throat> when you are looking at cations, you have to ask yourself, and it have multiple charges. Can it have multiple charges? How do you know that? If the answer is yes, it can have multiple charges, that means it is a transition metal. If the answer is no, it cannot have multiple charges. Remember, those are like your group uh, 1, 2, 13, and then there's a couple unique ones, uh, zinc, silver, and cadmium. So if your answer is no, when you name it, you just write it down. Write the name as is, you're done. If the answer is yes, it can have multiple charges. You have to find the positive charge. You do that by, uh, you find the positive charge by looking at the total negative charge and figuring it out. Uh, and then you're going to write the name and include a Roman numeral. So what I mean by that, uh, over here, no, write the name. It would be an example would be like, you just write down aluminum. Aluminum comes from group 13. Over here, a Roman numeral thing. Common one would be like copper. <laughs> so it's not just copper. It's going to be copper with the Roman numeral. Maybe Roman numeral one, uh, maybe Roman numeral two. <clears throat> but you would have to figure out its overall charge. And again, you would do that by finding the total negative charge. Whoa. Over to this side. If we are, oh my goodness. If we are. Uh, looking at your anions, for your anion, those are the negative charged things. There's uh, really, there's a question that you need to ask yourself. A uh, question can be, um, does it have multiple elements? <clears throat> uh, 
uh, multiple elements, meaning it has more than one type of atom in it. So if the answer is yes, you have a polyatomic ion. If you have a polyatomic ion, all you do is you write the name. For example, CO3, 2 minus, uh, is carbonate. So you would just write carbonate. Right? If the answer is no, it's something off of the periodic table, then you write the first syllable and you end with what? Ide. So chlorine becomes chloride, oxygen becomes oxide, fluorine becomes fluoride, so on and so forth. So the purpose of this flow chart is to organize our thoughts a little bit in terms of <clears throat> We have these four different things going on. Roman numerals, no Roman numerals, polyatomics, no polyatomics. Um, for our naming. All right. So again, it should look like this. I'm going to go ahead and upload this to uh, Haiku as well, just in case you missed something from this video. For the bottom part, I'm not going to go ahead. I'm not going to rewrite all this stuff. I'll just talk at you guys real quick. So for the bottom part, when you are formula writing, all right, these are my bullet points. Step one, so go ahead and write this down. You just write down the symbol. You write down the cation and the anion. You write down your cation symbol and your anion symbol. All right, so like Na plus and cl minus or something like that step two you find the common number uh, usually you can find the common number by multiplying the positive and the negative number together step three you're going to add subscripts until the charges cancel out and that's it all right. If you are skipping the step of writing down the symbols, though, you're really guessing. All right. Because the positive cation and the negative anion, they got to cancel out. If you are not doing that, you are taking shortcuts and you can easily make mistakes. So please take your time uh, as you write down your formulas. Look at your P table. Look at your polyatomic ions and just become comfortable and confident with those. All right. If you are still lost on names and formulas underneath this video and to the right of this video, there's a bunch of videos labeled day one, day two, day three, day four, day five. Um, they deal with the different types of names and formulas uh, writing for ionic compounds. All right. Please take a look at them. They are broken into transition metals versus polyatomic ions. They're all about 10 minutes long. A class period is 45 minutes. All right, this video is less than 10 minutes. So please use your time to work on things. As far as your blended work goes today, you should just, your page two should needs to be done today. Tomorrow, we're gonna take a short quiz after working on some mixed review. <clears throat> excuse me, allergy season. Uh, and as we work on those reviews um, tomorrow, we're going to see where you stand. All right. Do you know what you're doing? Or are you still making silly mistakes? So I hope today serves you well. I hope it allows you to organize your thoughts a little bit. Good luck. And I'll catch up with you later.